so Geshe-la is quoting this verse from the glorious Chandra Kirti, and um, it comes from a scripture known as the Umala Jupa or Majjhimakavatara, entering the middle way. So I, I will read um, the scripture that Geshe-la selected. As an entire crowd of blind people can easily be led to their desired destination by a seeing individual, likewise intelligence can lead blind qualities to victory. This so, in terms of these first two lines of the verse, as an entire crowd of blind people can easily be led to their desired destination by one who sees, what is being um, expressed here? Well, what we are saying is that any being, whether a human or also an animal, uh, if that person is not able to see and needs to reach a particular destination, uh, any type of being like that, if they encounter someone who has their eyesight and knows the road, that person will be able to lead them to the happiness of their destination, to the happiness of where they are trying to go. Oh, so Geshe-la is just reading the next two lines of the verse. Likewise, intelligence can lead the blind qualities to victory. So um, what is that saying? Well, Geshe-la said here, actually, this um, what's translated here as intelligence is actually like uh, wisdom. And in terms of realizing wisdom, of course, this is something that takes quite a lot of effort. But Geshe-la was just saying that even just developing a little wisdom within our mind, a feeling for that wisdom is something that is very beneficial. And on the basis of that, the wisdom becomes like our guide. It can guide us to whatever aim we seek, whether it is the day-to-day -day happiness, the daily happiness of this life, whether it is the happiness for lifetime to lifetime in the future, or the happiness of realization. So Geshe is just explaining the structure of the verse. The first uh, two lines give you uh, an example or an analogy of the blind person being led by the sighted one. And the second, take that analogy and explain how actually this is related to developing our wisdom to reach our desired destination. Oh, so Geshe is giving um, another example of the importance of wisdom. So if we have a family where, for example, the heads of the family, the mother and the father, are kind, merciful people. They are people who engage in um, honest livelihoods and so forth. Uh, if the parents lack wisdom, then because of that lack of wisdom, it still may be very difficult for that family to enjoy stability or prosperity. So they have 
the mother and father, these kind hearts, these compassionate attitudes, which are like the method side of the path. But because they don't have that wisdom, because they don't have that discernment, it may be difficult for them to provide or to give stability to the family in the way they would want. Oh, that's better, no, ji. Mm-hmm. So just to flesh out this example a little bit, if we think about a person who has developed the method side of the path, so, you know, in Buddhist terms we would say bodhicitta, but we can put that aside and think about things like love, compassion, patience, and so forth. Even if the person has developed those positive qualities, if they haven't developed their wisdom, they will have difficulty in being able to discern exactly how the unwholesome minds, how the afflictions are operating, and how to reduce them. So they won't really be able to come to their full capacity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, Geshe said that when we speak of wisdom, of course, emptiness is the final expression of that. But to sort of use a more basic example, if we um, speak of wisdom in terms of when we have attachment, the lens that we see the object of attachment through, the lens that we see the object of anger through. If we haven't developed wisdom to be able to identify those afflictions and really understand how they work, how they arise, and how um, to counter them, right? Their way of thinking and how to kind of undermine those unwholesome minds, then we won't be able to reduce those unwholesome minds, and similarly, we won't be able to bring the love, compassion, and so forth to that most beneficial fruition. Mm-hmm. So, of course, Geshe said, uh, very important in addition to our positive qualities of love, compassion, and so forth. If we are able to develop a little bit of wisdom, to be able to understand how those afflictions are operating, the way of thinking behind the afflictions, and how that way of thinking is false, and in this way are able to sort of reduce that way of thinking, then we will come to uh, a much more stable kind of continuous happiness in our life. So then Geshe said that in terms of anger and attachment, not only do we understand how the anger and attachment are arising in relationship to the object, So we can think, is that object of attachment or aversion really arising in the way that I think that it is or not? Is my reaction of attachment or aversion to uh, that particular object in accordance with reality or not? Is this something that is based on truth or not? And if we develop our wisdom in this way, we will gradually be able to decrease those unwholesome minds and reactions. Mm-hmm. 
So all of us, we really want some type of refuge, some type of protection from problems. And if we really speak about refuge or protection, this is none other than the practices of method and wisdom. And those qualities of method and wisdom, it's not those outside things that we think will give us happiness, but method and wisdom are those inner qualities that we develop. And that is truly what can lead to stable happiness. So if we are able to develop the method and wisdom to the point that we bring forth a perfect method and perfect wisdom, not only will we come to the stable happiness of this lifetime and lifetime uh, and the lifetimes to come, but we will be able to go from happiness to happiness all the way until we reach our final goal. Mm -hmm. So all of us are the same that if in day to day we try to hold on to method and wisdom in a stable way within our mind as much as possible, not only do we become happier, but um, our family members become happier, our partners become happier, our neighbors become happier, and eventually we are able to become a source of happiness for all beings, humans and animals. <laughs> and also similarly when we bring this forth, it's not before realization, it's not that we'll be able to get rid of anger completely, but at least that anger will not be able to damage us in a major way. So thank you very much, and having understood that, then please joyfully, with a happy mind, continue with your study and practice. We'll end it here.